The state of emergency we are now in has severely affected the food security of our most vulnerable citizens. Self-isolating becomes impossible for those who don't even have shelter. The Lionheart's COVID-19 street project has been working hard to provide meals for those in need. And Travis Blackmore, founder of Lionheart's Inc., joins me now. Travis, let's talk more about the Lionheart's uh, COVID-19 Meals to Go Street Project and just how big is the need out there? Uh, thank you for covering this. Um, really means a lot to myself and the crew. The need is uh, actually larger than we anticipated. Uh, when we started this in the middle of March, we began the first evening with somewhere around 26 folks coming out for a meal to go. And within uh, 14 days, we saw that grow to almost 240 meals averaging each night in the park. So let's talk about why there's so many people who need this uh, service. Yeah, for sure. I mean, initially, this is a, a partnership in the park we did with the Kingston Street Mission. And because of so many individual places around the city that are um, uh, what we would call frontline agencies working on the front lines with people on the street or those in need. Um, they have closed for one reason or another. It could be their volunteer base could be um, affected or the resources and what have you. Lionhearts in the background uh, felt this need and decided to partner with the Kingston Street Mission, seeing that a lot of their folks that would come into the street mission didn't have a anywhere to go, but most importantly, nothing to eat whatsoever. Um, Lionheart's view of the city is a little bit different than most frontline agencies. Lionheart's uh, premier uh, job in the city is to gather mass amounts of food that are donated to us. And we turn around, sort that, and then we deliver that to over 30 different agencies in town. That's what we normally do. We would hold the backup of places like Lunch by George, St. Vincent de Paul, Martha's Table, uh, Kingston Street Mission, and on and on and on, 30 different places. When these places started to uh, begin to close, some of them, the smaller ones, begin to close, we noticed that no one was feeding during the evening. So we, in consultation with St. Vincent de Paul and a few others, we said, you know, we've been piloting a to-go meal program over the last couple of months, since about October, and maybe we could do that during the dinner hour and it would help to alleviate some need in the city. They thought that was a great idea. So in consultation with the street mission, who are very close with us, uh, we decided to do that for the transient population walking through McBurney Park or Skeleton Park. And that's where we decided to do a mobile command unit. Now we've had to work very closely with the city of Kingston and public health to make sure that distancing measures are put in place and a lot of safety precautions and a lot of thought going on behind uh, the execution of this project. But um, to be honest, we're just honored to work side by side with all of these other agencies as we come to the front line for this particular period of time and help feed those in need. So let's talk more about keeping uh, the, your clients and your volunteers safe in this time of social distancing and staying safe. So for us, there's a lot of stuff already put in place that's out there um, from the government, from the city of Kingston as distancing measures and stuff of that nature. Uh, internally, of course, we have a lot of over precautions, a lot of when you come to certain points, hand washing stations, a lot of disinfectant a lot of questions that go to our own volunteers, let alone, you know, I mentioned before to you that we're not taking any more volunteers, but there's a lot of questions that happen internally. We expect people to be honest with those questions as who they've been around, if they are around anyone. In fact, we've actually asked our own teams outside of the meal prep, if you're on that particular small team, or if you're on the bag packing prep team, or if you're on our park team, that you isolate when you leave go home, stay safe, don't mix with others. Uh, for us, protecting this project is paramount. And I think everyone internally with Lionhearts understands that. Uh, you wouldn't want a member of your team to go and get sick. That might compromise hundreds of people having access to meals. I think everybody right now has uh, a real care and concern for protecting that. 
Could you talk about the challenges you might be facing with uh, keeping everybody safe right now? That's not your usual way of operating. I can't over stipulate, you know, the POC, the tiny teams that we have put together and how serious they take this. Uh, every evening there's a debrief for those folks where they run through uh, questions before they start their particular shift or whatever. There's questions, there is uh, a very good checklist of what they need to run down and answer. And, uh, you know, I can't over, over say how incredible the folks are that are volunteering their time for this project and just how serious they take it. The need is obviously increasing. So you were talking about opening up a second location? Yeah, so as of today, April 6th, uh, in addition to the McBurney Park uh, mobile unit, we're excited to announce a partnership with Kingston Community Health Services, and um, we'll be partnering with them and using their Weller Avenue location, 263 Weller Ave in Rideau Heights, and we will be offering meals to go there as well. So that presents a second whole kitchen team, a second whole prep team, and a second whole service team. Again, individual teams, small teams, very protective teams, um, but that way, you know, you have a, um, you have two sets of kitchen staff and we're thinking long term because we don't know when this is going to end it could be two months it could be three uh you know god forbid it's it's longer we're trying to play a, a potential long-term game think of those strategies but having two kitchens uh cooking and preparing meals one alleviates the pressure on all of your volunteers there's now multiple cooking units multiple serving units um but it also gives access to folks in an entirely different area of town. Now that may look different than what we do in the park. For instance, in the park, it's a very transient population. So we'll offer things like socks or a warm jacket if needed, or, or you know, uh, some small personal toiletries, maybe for someone living on the street, that sort of thing. Uh, in Rideau Heights, I believe it will be a straight meals program. Can you talk about the need you might have for funding and donations? That is, um, that's our largest need at this point. People are, I can't tell you how many times a day I get emails, can I volunteer my time? Uh, can I bring a bag of uh, canned goods or something buy from my house? Uh, with our precautions and our safety precautions, we've stopped taking volunteers. We've stopped taking public donations. The only food donations we take are from our partner agencies like Costco and Findlay Foods and other approved agencies that we accept mass amounts of food from. Uh, so that really creates the need for funding. So for instance, if we're cooking uh, a meal in the evening and we don't have a protein and we need to, to add chicken or something, for instance, then we'll need to procure some chicken. And, and that's where the safety precautions come in place. And that's also where the need for funding comes into play. Now, when you're cooking meals, let's say we're doing 240 in the park and you're doing 150 in the Heights, then you're looking at an incredible amount of meals every day. You know, for instance, to date right now, we've served over 2,800 meals at McBurney Park. And that number is just staggering if you think of what does this look like in three weeks or two weeks but funding is definitely the biggest need 100 percent uh i can't overstate that enough and i i'd love to thank all the people that have donated and sponsored i mean we wouldn't be here we wouldn't be expanding this project if it wasn't for for those people but uh, the need is great so travis how can people donate to the lionhearts uh, covid 19 street project our website is www.lionhearts.ca. An easy way to remember that is Lion Hearts. There's one lion, multiple hearts. The S is on the hearts. Lionhearts.ca. You'll see our COVID page right at the very top. You can click that, and there's a donate button right there. And, of course, we are a uh, recognized Canadian charity, and tax donations uh, will receive. Uh, people can receive their tax uh, receipt. So Travis, for you, why is it important to take on this project and help out? Uh, I, that's really been the DNA of Lionhearts since day one. It was really about loving and connecting people in the city with uh, lots of different elements, food insecurity, 
is a massive one that I think all of our food agencies face. And uh, we stand shoulder to shoulder with those agencies. Uh, we're honored to work side by side, side, by side with them. Uh, these guys have been doing this for years. For Lionhearts, it's only been five years. We've really been playing a, like a background role. Uh, people, lots of people on, will be watching this saying, I've never heard of Lionhearts. And I understand that. I usually explain that in such a way that um, we're a distribution agency. So we're a lot like Cisco or a lot like Findlay Foods, except a charity version. We accept mass amounts of donation and we hold up the backs of charities to feed those on the front line. And that's kind of uh, what we fell into, really. We saw the amount of food that Costco would donate to us on a, on a daily basis. We literally pick up there seven days a week. Uh, it works out to be more than 365 days a year because sometimes they'll call us two or three times in a day to do pickups. We're just grateful that it doesn't end up in landfills. So hats off to Cobb's Bread and Little Caesars and lots of uh, Starbucks, again, Costco. These guys are donating. Last year, uh, they donated $2.3 million worth of food that was distributed through Lionhearts across the city. And that would be a lot of food for one particular food agency to accept and move properly. So that's how we come in and play the background, hold them up. Travis, thanks for sharing this with us today and good luck tonight on the, uh, the street project. Thank you very much. I appreciate all this. It really means a lot to me and the crew. Take care.